1.8 is on primary productivity. It's a big word, but it's really not that difficult of a concept. We just have to put fancier terms on it. The goal of this is to explain how solar energy is acquired and transferred by living organisms. Primary productivity is basically just how much photosynthesis is happening. So it looks at the rate at which solar energy is being converted into glucose and um, just all the other, other byproducts of photosynthesis over a unit of time. We can see right away the areas we, where we have the most productivity. It's pretty obvious it's going to be in places that have more vegetation and maybe more moderate temperatures or more rain because plants need water. Gross prim primary productivity is all of the photosynthesis that happens. Whereas net primary productivity is how much of that energy is available for the consumers. So plants have to use this glucose or whatever for its own cellular respiration. It also needs ATP to continue being a plant. So the net primary productivity looks at what's left after it's already done all of its life stuff and can be available to consumers for their own cellular respiration. So it's a very simple math equation. GPP minus respiration equals NPP. We measure productivity in some unit of energy per unit area per unit time. So for example, kilocalories per meter squared. So the amount of energy being produced in this, this one meter square of land in a year. It's not surprising the areas where we have a lot of productivity, like algae beds, a lot of little, little algae guys, coral reefs, uh, tropical rainforest. They have a lot of vegetation. They have a lot of trees, a lot of shrubs. So you have a lot of primary productivity, a lot of tissue being generated. Just kind of sounds gross, but you know, plants growing. You have a lot of plants growing, a lot of growth. Versus tundra and deserts, not so much. So it's not a, it's not a hard concept, but it just tends to be confusing because we put fancier words on it. But it's not that bad. And also, I just want to point out that the the distance of light affects then how much energy can be produced, so how productive it can be. Um, most of our light is absorbed in the upper first upper meter of water, and then blue light. It's like you know, if you split part a beam of sunlight, this is what I'm talking about. The blue light can only penetrate. 100 meters, but only in the clearest water. So that's assuming there's no sediment floating around or anything like that. Well, this affects a photosynthesized versus an aquatic ecosystem. So you're going to have more photosynthesis happening in the surface than, than further below. Um, organisms down here have had to adapt to much cooler ways of getting their energy than up here, which again is an obvious concept. Anyways, summary of this, uh, write about how solar energy is acquired and transferred by living organisms.